Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times on this Thursday afternoon, November 24th, 2016, here in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas. Uh, I was just out trying to come up with my depressed, collapsitarian Thanksgiving wine a few minutes ago out there in the clouds of mosquitoes and as I was sitting there giving thanks for my my little dog my little dog I ironically enough I look up and the next door neighbor comes out of the house I'm talking the house next door to me here and this young man comes out holding his little dog, I guess it's actually his mother's little dog. So I'm sitting there with my little dog in my lap, giving my depressed collapsitarian rant, and looking right at me is this young man holding his little, his mother's little dog in his, in his lap. And uh, this little story occurred to me, which I've been needing to share with you for the past week. This is actually two anecdotes. I just thought. Uh, this is certainly the apropos moment to tell us something. Anyway, this young man, I, I really don't know what his name is. We're going to call him, uh, what are we going to, what are we going to call this man? Let's call him Lucky LaRue. So, a year ago, one year ago, probably right around Thanksgiving, uh, I was talking to his mother, who lives next door to this house, a real nice woman who has the little dog, and she was just gushing about her son and, and just about how happy she was for him, how everything, he, he's probably, I'm guessing, I'm guessing late 20s, perhaps, uh, this fellow, I've met him a couple times, a real nice young fellow. Uh, just how everything was going right in his life, that he had found the, the girl of his dreams and that they were, they had either started some business, they were actually the owners of this new business, I think some sort of restaurant, bar, whatever, uh, that you would expect in South Austin, Texas, uh, Wish I could. They were either they either had started this business and it was very successful, or they were at least working there, had good solid jobs, uh, in this very vibrant, uh, whatever it was. Probably a restaurant, might have been Radio Coffee House. I'm not sure, but anyway, they were in love. Uh, I don't know what the living situation is, but he had, he wasn't living with Mama anymore. I was glad to say they had gotten their own apartment. Everything was going swimmingly. This woman was was so happy, and everything you know that this kid's uh, future was so bright. He had to wear shades. And then last week, uh, she brought her little dog over to play with Sancho when I was sitting out having my morning coffee. So I asked her how her son was doing, uh, you know, since she didn't mention him, I asked about him and, and immediately realized my mistake. And, uh, no, that's right, I asked her about what she was doing for Thanksgiving. What she was doing for Thanksgiving, meaning today. And she mentioned that it was just going to be her and her son at home, meaning the house next door, meaning that her son had moved back in with her. And uh, he had announced to his mother that he did not want any foreigners joining them for Thanksgiving dinner. Any foreigners. By foreigners, he wasn't talking Mexicans and Muslims. He, he was talking, he didn't want anybody other than he and his mother and the little dog. Uh, 
and I asked her what was going on in his life and her response, I wish I had the direct quote, was that he has, that at some point in the past year, he had fallen into existential despair. This young man had fallen into existential despair. He had quit his job. His girlfriend, he hadn't fallen into existential despair because he had been dumped by his girlfriend. He was still involved with this uh, with this young woman. Apparently they were very much in love, but he fell into existential despair and she of course dumped him when, when he became depressed. He lost his job, he lost his girlfriend, he lost his apartment or wherever he and his girlfriend were living, moved back in with his mother and is now completely sitting over there depressed and existential despair and I asked what do you mean he fell into existential despair and well I know exactly what uh, what the answer to that question was I just wanted to see how she would answer it and she said he figured out at his age probably as they say probably late 20s he figured out at his age that this, that this is all there is and ever will be. That this young man just took three deep breaths in his little fairy tale life and understood that this, this existence is all that there will ever be. And, and she said that he actually asked her at one point, Mom, is this all that there is? And she said, yes, this is all that there is and, and ever will be. And, uh, so anyway, that's the update to that cheery story. He is living back with mom and the little dog, but at least he has his little dog in his lap next door, about 100 feet from where I'm sitting. And uh, th th this other cheery anecdote I want to, your old depressed collapse and Terry wants to share with you. So I was at this big picking party this weekend talking to a female friend of mine. We will call her Lulu called her Lulu, Lulu, uh, as, uh, what did, how did she describe herself at this party full of good old boy Texans? She called herself the token New York Jew at this party. Uh, she has a very quick-witted, self-effacing sense of humor. So Lulu, uh, calling herself the token New York Jew at, the, at this uh, room full of clueless Texas good old boys. So I was asking her about her daughter. I've known her daughter uh, for years. And uh, since she was a little girl, I guess this girl is probably about 20 right now. I know that she and mom have had a few ups and downs over the years, so I asked how things were going with her daughter, and she just very matter-of-factly tells me that her daughter is quitting her job at Petco. She works at Petco in Austin. She's quitting her job at Petco and moving to Israel to live on a, what do they call those communes, a kibbutz or whatever, and she's joining the Israeli army to become a soldier in the Israeli army. Lulu's daughter, this little hippie chick who I have known, as I said, I've known her since she was three years old. She's this little airy-fairy, little, uh, little peace and love, little hippie chick is what she is. And... Uh, 
she is now quitting her job at Petco to become a soldier in the Israeli army. And I'm like, whoa. And, and I said, and, and I said, well, Lulu, I said, well, what do you think of that? How, how do you feel about that? And I assumed she was going to say, I am completely appalled and horrified. But she just shrugged her sol- shoulders and she said, I'm, I'm fine with it. And I, and I said, oh, really? Uh, I, I, I said, you're fine with your daughter joining the Israeli army to become a soldier. Uh, and she goes, well, Hambone, uh, it, at least it beats working at Petco. And I said, oh, really? I said, uh, I mean, again, knowing the answer to a question, I said, what's so bad about working at Petco? Well, we all know the, the, the answer. And without missing a beat, she, she just kind of laughed. And she said, and this is pretty close to a, she said, to a question, she said, Hambone working at Petco is a cyclical, I don't know what the word cyclical meant in this content. Working at Petco is a cyclic, a cyclical spiraling downward descent into nothingness. Working at Petco is the hamster wheel to nowhere. (laughs) Working at Petco is the hamster wheel to nowhere. That is exactly what working at Petco is, is the hamster wheel to nowhere. And of course, what she meant was if your choice as a 20 year old uh, in, in this, in 2016, uh, you know, looking at your life is, is getting on the hamster wheel to nowhere or putting a, a, a goddamn assault rifle in, in your hand and moving to a kibbutz or whatever they call those things in Israel and arming yourself with an AK-47 uh, to defend the fine, the fine uh, state of Israel, uh, she's going to take, her, her mom thinks that's the better choice. That the Israeli army beats the hamster wheel to nowhere. So uh, I don't even know why I'm sharing these stories on this depressing uh, Thanksgiving today. I just thought it was apropos. You know, just thinking of this young man next door, thinking of this uh, this girl moving to Israel. You know, what the fuck? One thing I am thankful for is that uh, I still believe, although not nearly as firmly as I used to, that I, I mean, I'm 57 years old, that I am still going to get out of this mess with the screen door barely hitting me on my own guilty ass on my way out. But guys, I got to say, as, uh, as 2016 just dissolves into madness here going into the final month. Uh, I don't know if we're going to make it out of here. But uh, I am glad that I'm 57 and not 27 because I, I, I shudder to think. I shudder to think what that 27-year-old young man sitting over there clutching his little dog 
watching his whole life just spiral down into existential despair. What the fuck is he going to see in his lifetime? What the fuck is this, uh, is this 20-year-old little girl moving to Israel to join the army to get off the hamster wheel to nowhere? What the fuck? Anyway, I just thought I would share those little stories. Do with them what you will. But what I will do now is what I came up here to do is uh, go find my little Thanksgiving bottle of tequila and my Thanksgiving baggie of weed and uh, start another night in the end times before heading to the Christmas tree lot at the Optimist Club on Black Friday. For me and the little dog. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog. The little dog is exhausted from chasing all those squirrelies like that. He's a tired little dog. Look at that tired little dog. Too many squirrels. And not enough time.